I'm Mary Turner with Edmund Optics, and I'd like to give you a very quick overview on some of the parameters to think about when you're trying to select a beam expander for your particular application. The first thing is, of course, figuring out the proper magnification for the beam expander. Now, sometimes it's going to be as simple as, I need a beam that goes from one size to another size at a particular location. That's going to be pretty easy to figure out. However, there are a couple of other properties we need to think about as well. First off is the natural property of the Gaussian beam is to continue to expand out as it propagates through space. If you have a very long optical path, an optical train, like back and forth across a, your uh, bench top, you might need to make sure over that path distance how much is the natural expansion of that laser beam. By adjusting the magnification, you can reduce the speed at which the beam increases in size. Another property is that some of the components within that optical train may have very sensitive components like polarization uh, devices or thin film type beam splitters that will be damaged by high laser energy. By using a beam expander, you spread out the energy so that there's less power per unit area on those components. So you might need to choose the magnification to make sure that you have no potential of damaging or destroying the other components in the optical system. So once you've used these three factors to figure out the magnification, you'll want to choose a beam expander that has proper coatings for your desired wavelength proper coatings that will withstand the energy density coming from your laser. And you also want to choose a beam expander that's say one and a half to two times the size of the beam at the interfaces of the input and output of your beam expander um, so you don't introduce any excess clipping. Uh, you also would usually like to have a beam expander with a fixed magnification factor. These are typically less expensive, and even if you can't find one off the shelf, they can probably be manufactured relatively simply if using available components rather than using a very expensive variable beam expander. If you have any further questions, any of our product support engineers would be glad to help you answer any questions you might have. Thank you.